Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to compute the unit growth from 0 to infinity of x minus sine of x over x cubed times 1 plus x squared dx. Now this integral is improper at infinity. At 0 it's not improper. In fact, the limit of the integrand exists as x approaches 0. Please let me know in the comment what, the, what this limit is. Now let's denote this integral by i. Okay. We're going to use Laplace transform. In order to do that, we're going to introduce a function. So the function defined by f of t equals the integral from 0 to infinity of tx minus sine of tx over x cubed times 1 plus x squared dx as long as t is greater than or equal to 0. So that i is now equal to f of 1. So once we, we're able to find, to compute f of t, we should be able to find the value of i. Okay, now the Laplace transform of lowercase f will be denoted by uppercase f, and it's defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t dt. Notice that we are integrating with respect to t, therefore the output will depend on s as long as the integral converges. Okay, so let's compute f of s. It's equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times the integral from 0 to infinity of tx minus sine of tx over x cubed times 1 plus x squared dx, then dt. Now, notice that e to the negative st does not depend on x. So with respect to x, e to the negative st is just a constant. Therefore, we can bring it inside those brackets, and we can just remove those brackets. Now we have a double integral. Now, if we take the limit of the integrand as x goes to infinity, we get 0. And if we take the limit of the integrand as t goes to infinity, we get 0 provided that the real part of s is greater than 0. So, assuming that the real part of s is greater than 0, we can actually say that the integrand is bounded. Therefore, we can apply Fubini theorem. So, applying Fubini theorem, we can integrate with respect to t, then with respect to x. Note that the integral from 0 to infinity of tx minus sine of tx e to the negative st dt is just a Laplace transform. It's the Laplace transform of tx minus sine of tx. Because the Laplace transform is linear, we can simply write it as x times the Laplace transform of t minus the Laplace transform of sine of xt. Now here x is of course a constant. Okay, so now we want to find the Laplace transforms. The Laplace transform of t is just 1 over s squared. The Laplace transform of sine of, of at is equal to a over a squared plus s squared. So the Laplace transform of xt is equal to x over x squared plus s squared. Okay, so now we just want to simplify everything. We combine everything and we end up with integral from 0 to infinity of x cubed over s squared times x cubed times 1 plus x squared times x squared plus s squared. Okay, now we're going to uh, make a partial fraction decomposition. Now, after the partial fraction decomposition, we get to get the following. Now, if we take the, in the integral, we're just going to get arc tangents. So we're going to have 1 over s squared times s squared minus 1 times arc tangent of x minus 1 over s times arc tangent of x over s, which we're going to evaluate between 0 and infinity. Now, for x equals 0, we just get 0. So we just need to take the limit as x approaches infinity. But the limit of arc tangent as at infinity is pi over 2. So we just get pi over 2 times s squared times s squared minus 1 times 1 minus 1 over s. 
Now we can write 1 minus 1 over s as s minus 1 over s and s squared minus 1 as s minus 1 times s plus 1. Then we can just cancel out s minus 1. And we'll end up with pi over 2s cubed times s plus 1. Again, we're going to use a partial, partial fraction decomposition of this fraction. Of this fraction. We're going to get pi over 2 times 1 over s cubed minus 1 over s squared mat, uh, plus 1 over s minus 1 over s plus 1. And because the Laplace transform of t to the p is equal to gamma of p plus 1 over s plus p, uh, s to the p plus 1, and the Laplace transform of e to the e to the a t is equal to 1 over s minus a, we deduce that f of t was actually pi over 2 times t squared over gamma of 3 minus t over gamma of 2 plus 1 over gamma of 1 minus e to the negative t. Okay, so f of t is equal to pi over 2 times t squared over 2 minus t over 1 plus 1 over 1 minus e to the negative 1. Now we just need to compute i by evaluating. So as we evaluate, we get i, which is f of 1, is equal to pi over 2 times 1 half minus e to the negative 1. And I think this is a good place to stop. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing and liking. I'll see you next time. Bye.